On April 9th, 2011, a young man walked into the Ridderhof Mall in the city of Alphen on den Rhein, 15 miles outside of Amsterdam. It was a Saturday afternoon, just after lunchtime, and the mall was full of shoppers enjoying some retail therapy. That's when the 24-year-old male, who was wearing camouflage pants and a leather jacket underneath a bulky vest, pulled out a rifle and started firing. Welcome to the first episode of Murder at the Mall. When most people hear about mass shootings taking place in shopping centres, their minds go straight to the United States. In fact, some of the deadliest mall shootings have taken place elsewhere in the world. Thailand, Kenya, and in the case of this story, the Netherlands. I chose this story to kick off the series because, even though I've read a lot about malls, it's one I was never really aware of. Plus, it took place fairly close to home, in a country I've visited on numerous occasions. And, despite its tragic end, the specifics of this story are still a little fuzzy more than a decade later. The killer in question was named Tristan van der Vlees. He lived in an apartment block with his parents just a couple of minutes away from the mall and was a member of a local gun club. He held a license that allowed him to legally own five guns. Assuming he brought all of his guns on April 9th, he owned three. A semi-automatic Smith & Wesson M&P 1522, a Colt M1911 handgun, and a Taurus Raging Bull Magnum revolver. According to a thread on Reddit, these are the actual guns that were used in the shooting. By all accounts, Tristan did most of his damage that day with the Smith & Wesson rifle. In a matter of minutes, the shooter claimed six victims and injured 17 more people, including children. Then he turned one of his handguns on himself and took his own life. Five years prior to the shooting, Van der Vlees had spent 10 days in an institution after attempting suicide. Despite extensive documentation of his paranoid schizophrenia, he was still able to obtain a firearms license in 2008. He would attempt suicide twice more that same year, but retained his gun license, despite having an illegal weapons possession charge dating back to 2003. At his family home, alongside a suicide note, a manifesto was found, entitled The Counter Word, The Word Against God and Religion. Some message boards claim that Tristan was interested in Ouija boards and the supernatural, with a few posters suggesting that he believed he was contacting one or both of the Columbine shooters. News sources claim that the shooter may have been motivated by a desire to punish God for a belief that he had abandoned him. Reportedly, Van der Vlees' parents owned a store in the mall. It's not immediately clear whether that store was open or if they were present at the time of the shooting. They were later unsuccessfully sued by 13 people who survived the incident, claiming that the parents should have done more to discourage their son's interest in guns. As you can see from this Google Maps capture, the mall itself is an unassuming single-storey structure, nestled in amongst the suburbs surrounded by houses, a gas station, and a couple of apartment blocks. I'm not sure which one exactly, but the Van der Vlees family home was located inside one of these apartment buildings. Jumping back to captures from 2009, we can see that not much about the mall changed after the shooting, except for the removal of the large tent-like structures from the exterior. The cheerful rainbow decoration above the main doors, which appeared in a lot of news footage about the shooting, has also been removed. Beyond that, there isn't much more to see walking around the exterior of the mall, except for a lot of back entrances, parking structures and a car wash. And a small bakery, which appears to still be open to this day. All of the Ridderhof Mall shooting victims were over the age of 40, and half of them over the age of 65. It may have been that age played a role in these otherwise random killings, or it may just be that these people were less able to make a quick escape. In a particularly cruel twist of fate, the first of the victims was a poet and journalist who had fled to the Netherlands after surviving an assassination attempt in his home country of Syria. Some of the details of this case are particularly curious. Like the fact that, despite arriving with multiple guns and wearing a bulletproof vest, Van der Vlees shot himself before police even arrived. 
This doesn't seem consistent with the outward appearance that he was ready for a shootout. A note was found in the gunman's car indicating that he had also left bombs in three other malls around the city, but when those malls were evacuated and extensively searched, no evidence of explosives was found. We know that an unidentified individual voluntarily testified to police that Van der Vlees had previously spoken to him of a desire to harm himself and others, but they were never identified as an accomplice or prosecuted. Looking at the date and time of the attack, Eric Harris's birthday, and around the time the pair committed suicide, it's clear that Van der Vlees was fascinated by Columbine, which was famously carried out by a duo. Couple that with the bomb threats and the extensive preparations made by the shooter, body armour, multiple weapons, and it makes you wonder whether this might have been part of a larger operation that failed to materialise. It may have been that, feeling abandoned and seeing no other way out, the shooter chose suicide over a shootout with the police but we'll never know that for sure. Both immediately afterwards and years later, it's hard to resist the instinct to try to make sense of incidents like these. Unfortunately, in most cases, there is no sense to be made out of them. More than a decade later, the Ritterhof Mall continues to serve the sleepy community of Alphanand der Rhein. The only reminder of the grisly mass shooting that occupied just three minutes of one spring afternoon is a small memorial to those who lost their lives. This has been the first episode of Murder at the Mall. Thank you for watching.